break up or not to break up? That's a difficult question, especially where kids are involved. When children are involved, many, many couples are struggling, you know, with getting along. Sometimes there have been a number of wounds and hurts that have just been limited in terms of our ability to recover. And not everybody's able to recover at the same time. There's a grieving process when there are arguments and fights that happen. So if you're considering breaking up, there's a lot of important things you can do to prepare for that step and stage when children are involved. What's important as humans, what our mind tends to do, this container with a lot of data, when we're breaking up or ending something, it tends to want to throw out information to justify why we're ending, justify why we're leaving. You leave a job, all of a sudden you can hear, well, I didn't like it anyway. Well, it wasn't the greatest job. Uh, the truth is, you probably enjoyed a lot of parts of that job. So when you're breaking up from a co-parent, from a person who's the parent to your children, it's the same process. The negative part of our mind or that critical voice can start dissing and disrespecting. Watch out for that. It's very dangerous and it's insidious. It can develop so slowly you don't even know what's happening. You could talk to friends and family negatively about the other person and they do what they think they're supposed to do, provide you with support. So lowering any kind of blame and finger pointing, getting rid of as much of that finger pointing as possible is very, very important right off the bat because that pattern can develop. And then of course we could end up in court, finger pointing starts to get multiplied 10 times, hundreds of times. People then feel even more wounded. It's very hard then to develop that healthy co-parenting relationship where you attend functions together without that tension. You'll be able, you'll have many, many moments down the road with birth of children, graduations, marriages, all kinds of events where when you work it out well, you'll be able to attend those events and the children will feel relaxed, people will feel calm and relaxed in your presence versus the alternate, which is all too common, unfortunately, and it's unnecessary with a bit of coaching. Governments even legislated cooperative parenting coaching, so there are resources out there, whether it's in a group format or individual, just for you and your family. Lots of resources you can get access to. Referring to the co-parent, a lot of people don't know how to refer. You might have said my wife, my girlfriend in the past. Well, it's very common to call people exes. Let's leave all the exes in Texas, like that country and western song said. There's no exes when you have children. You're both parents for life, and you're both 100% parents, 100% mom, 100% dad. So you're there for life. And it's important to use terms such as co-parent, the mother of the children, the father of the children. That's a very helpful thing to keep positive terms or terms of, uh, that are more endearing than critical. Even using terms like we and us, your mother and I, your father and I, that actually sends a message to the children that still a family. A lot of children come in and we interview them and they think they're not a family anymore. Very important to remind the children and one another, you're still a family. It's the disengagement or the broken romantic relationship that's out. Think about that. The romantic part of the relationship was intertwined with the parenting. That's not an easy thing to take apart. There are a lot of complexities to that. What is just parenting versus what was caring for one another as romantic partners? So we can help you dissect that, break down what some of the behaviors are that would be very helpful. And definitely bringing down finger pointing and blame, lifting up the other parent in front of the children and reminding the children that both parents want a healthy relationship with the children and both parents love the children, which most parents do. However, our face and tone, our body, our walk and talk needs to model that. Just saying it, not enough. We need to walk and talk that we still care for the co-parent and that we're still gonna be interacting in a healthy, respectful manner.
In 30 years working with couples and families, I haven't had any parents that said, you know, I'd really like to kind of grow up, fall in love, have a few kids and wreck it. So I don't think that's a planned, calculated, intentional thing, but it does happen. So when it happens, it's very important to get a little bit of coaching to think about how you could do this differently. Cooperative Parenting After Divorce is a great resource guide for parents by Boyan and Termini that talks to us about the disengagement of the romantic relationship and the re-engagement as co-parents. So you have parenting qualities, however, the contractual obligations, yes, and they are informal and formal, contractual obligations in a marriage, common law or otherwise, those are gradually developed over the course of the relationship. From the point of one person saying, I'm out, the contract is null and void. Even though people might run on in the previous contract to some extent, it's very unlikely that that contract will sustain them over the years ahead. Very important to develop a new way of interacting that's based on co-parenting alone, child-focused. So if you're considering breaking up, you might want to consider hiring a cooperative parenting coach, talking to a counselor who's adept at helping couples during this difficult transition. Very important for moms and dads to still support one another, support the relationship each one has with the children, and to really model for the children that getting along is the most important, uh, not the topics or the issues. Getting along and treating each other lovingly and well during a very difficult storm does require some assistance, extra support. Even asking our in-laws and relatives to be supportive of the other person is difficult to do. So get a little bit of coaching and it can go a long way in fostering healthier child development, healthier family development, and really increasing mental fitness for all family members. Mm -hmm.